Hey everyone, so this is an example video for the chain rule, but also with second derivatives. So we're going to be taking second derivatives every single time. So here are the three examples I'm going to do in this video. So this is going to be fun. <laughs> All right, so starting with this first one. So I'm going to take the first derivative first. <laughs> so, okay, looking at this function. So the thing with the chain rules, you always want to identify the outermost function, which in this case would be sine and then the innermost function, which would be 6x squared. And I always like to work from the outside in. So first I take the derivative of the outermost function. So the derivative of the outermost function is cosine, and then I leave the inside intact. Now, just a pro tip, sometimes um, when you're writing these out, sometimes people get kind of confused as to what belongs with the cosine function. So you might, for like a problem like this, you might want to write out just like a set of parentheses here, just so that you remember that this is attached to the cosine in case you sometimes mix up your, your, your trig functions. Now I'm gonna multiply that by the derivative of the inside function. So the derivative of six X squared is 12 X. Okay, so now I have to write this out in a way that makes sense. So this will be uh, 12 X, 12 X cosine of six X squared. All right, so now for the super happy fun, y double prime. Okay, so just notice that in the first derivative, we have effectively made this now a harder problem because now we have to use the product rule here. So we've got two functions, 12x and cosine of 6x squared. So taking the derivative of 12x, the derivative of 12x is just 12. Oops, sorry, let me, let me go back to using my white color. Derivative of 12x is 12 and then I leave the second function intact. And then I leave the 12x alone and I take the derivative of this function. And now once again, I have an outer function and inner function. So the outermost function in this case would be cosine. The innermost function would be 6x squared. So the derivative of cosine is negative sine. And then I leave the 6x squared alone. And then I'm gonna multiply that running out of room here, multiply that by the derivative of the inside function, which is once again 12x. And then I can simplify all of this. So this will be 12x, or sorry, this will be 12 cosine of 6x squared plus 144x squared. Oops, this should really be a minus, I guess. Minus 144x squared sine of 6x squared. Okay, so moving on to the next one. So for this one, we're gonna have to use the product rule right away. So my two functions in this case are x and then e to the negative x. So I've got f double or yeah, f prime of x. I don't know why I can't speak today. So first I take the derivative of x, which is just, I'll just write a one here, and then I leave the e to the negative x alone. And then I'll leave the x alone, and now I have to take the derivative of this function, which when I do that, now I have to use a chain rule. So the outermost function is this, e, and the innermost function is this negative x. So the derivative of e is just e, and I leave the inside alone. And then the derivative of negative x is negative one. So there's all the pieces. So now I can simplify all of this. So this will be e to the negative x minus, minus x e to the negative x. Okay, and so now we get to take the second derivative so as I take the second derivative, now I'm gonna use the chain rule here. So we already know what the derivative of this is. So it's, it's, um, it's just gonna be e to the negative x times negative one. So there's that part. And now I'm effectively just taking this derivative. So that's the same thing as what we started with. We're just gonna subtract basically all of this stuff here. So when I take the derivative of this, I'm gonna get, this is gonna turn into uh, let's see, I'll use a square bracket and we'll call this one times e to the negative x and then plus x times e to the negative x times negative one. So I'm just repeating really the same work from above. And I'm trying to squeeze all of this in. Oh, sometimes it just pains me having such little space. I wish I had a actual blackboard I could work with in front of you guys. Um, okay, so this will be negative e to the negative x minus e to the negative x, let's see, plus 
x e to the negative x. So just a note here, this is a minus here and a minus here. So when you distribute these two things, they actually, this whole thing, this term here will become positive. And then I can rewrite this one more time. So this will be negative 2e to the negative x plus xe to the negative x. And now for this last one, so once again, we're going to be using the product rule and the chain rule. So the two functions, I have this x and then this guy here. So this will be, so first I take the derivative of the first part, so the derivative of that is 1. And then I leave the second function alone. And then I leave the first function alone. And now I have to take the derivative of this guy, which when I take the derivative of this, now I get to use a chain rule. The outermost function is this thing to the third. The innermost function is this 3x plus 5. So this will be 3 times 3x plus 5 squared. And then I multiply that by the derivative of the inside, which will just be 3. Okay. Now, as I simplify this, so I actually want to be a little careful when I do this. So this will be plus 3, oops, this will be plus 9, 9x times 3x plus 5 squared. So you, you might notice that there's, there's more than one way that you can do this now. So I could actually factor out this 3x plus 5 squared, I could factor that out and that, that could make for a slightly different, maybe easier problem. So if we play around with this a little bit, let's say that I factor out 3x plus 5 squared. So I'm factoring out from both terms. So if I factor 3, out, 3x plus 5 squared out of this, I'm just left with 3x plus 5 because I had 3 of them and I took out 2. And then from this term here, if I take out the 3x plus 5 squared and bring it out front, I'm just left with the 9x. So plus 9x. And so now, if I simplify this one more time, I get 3x plus 5 squared, and this becomes 12x plus 5. So the reason I bring this up is by doing this simplification, I actually have made a little less work for myself. If I just took the derivative here, so look at this, I would have to use the chain rule here, and then I would have to use the chain rule here. And I would also have to use the product rule on this whole thing. Now, by simplifying this, I actually just have to take the chain rule once, and then I have to use the product rule. So sometimes it might be a little extra work to simplify these, and, and really you wanna simplify when it makes sense, and simplify to the level that makes sense. So simplification, a lot of times has like very practical applications and this would be one of them. So let me make some space. And now let's take the second derivative. So second derivative. So once again, I'm going to be using the product rule. Here's one function. Here's another function. And then when I take the derivative of this guy, so the outermost function in this case is going to be this thing squared and the innermost function is this. Now, technically, one other thing that you could have done, by the way, if you really wanted to avoid the chain rule, you could have technically multiplied this out and then multiplied it with this. Um, I don't know, that just looks like a lot of work to me. And, I, and we're, the whole point of this is to use the chain rule, but I mean, that is another option of what you could do. So um, just pointing that out. So let's see, I bring the two down and I subtract one from that exponent and then I leave, oh, and then I multiply that by the derivative of the inside which is three. So here's the derivative of this guy here. And then I leave this function alone. So don't forget about that other part. It's kind of a lot of information you have to keep track of when you're working with these. Okay. And then I leave the three X plus five squared alone. And I take the derivative of 12 X plus five, which is just 12. So now we want to simplify this as far as possible. So I've got Y double prime. Let's see, this is gonna be six times three X plus five times 12 X plus five. All that plus 12 times three uh, X plus five squared. Now, once again here, you, you could probably simplify this a bit farther. Oops, and this is supposed to be an X. Um, you, you could simplify this a bit farther 
I mean, for our purposes, I, I'm really done with the problem, but depending on what you needed to do with it, you might want to simplify it farther, or you might find that if you're looking in a solution manual, maybe they take it a step farther. So again, just make it work for you. So that covers it for this particular video. Hopefully that was helpful for you. Um, I'll see you guys next time.